time when the world looks a bit quiet and we are glad that uh, the Lord has granted uh, this moment. Look into the whole week we have been here having uh, different uh, occasions that uh, we were gathering here. Yesterday we were here so that we could uh, commemorate the issues of uh, the last supper that was taken by Jesus and his disciples. And we are happy of those people who are able to, came, to come. And we are glad that uh, we had a wonderful service of uh, food washing also. And uh, we were so much blessed. This morning, my name is Kenneth Kebali Kinyanjui. And above that, I'm saved. Nampenda Yesu. Abaya tunamuimbia. Nambaya tunakiri. Alikufa msarabani kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu. And I'm glad that uh, this morning we are going to share a few things that pertains this week, which is adding, and which is a com uh, combination of many things which happened since Palm Sunday. There are so many activities that took place, and today, is a commemoration of all those events which are very crucial to our lives as believers. I want to start to say that um, the word passion comes from a Latin word which says it's suffering. Because we are in that week of passion, we need to understand the background of this. And that word Passion now means suffering, troubles, mashida. And there's an episode in a Raja story which cannot be well be understood until you come to a point of understanding of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the theme of the passion, it has been three events. It's that between now the Palm Sunday and uh, the resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ on Sunday. On Good Friday, we, it has a significant of uh, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ by the Roman authorities. And I want to say that when Christ was crucified, the government that was in place those days was the Roman garment which was in power and it haunted this man day and night so that they could silence him not to speak about another kingdom other than the Roman government that they knew that it was only the authority that was in place that time and the Roman government was a bit of scared or threatened and they were feeling like this man who is becoming very famous and who is actually turning people's thinking and their ideologies in a different way other than what they used to know was becoming a threat to the government. And now, the authorities combined with the high priests, the elders of that time, they took charge to make sure that this man who is transforming people's thinking and ideologies and also perception of issues of other things and the, uh, and the kingdom of heaven has been silenced once and for all. So the issue of uh, Jesus being crucified didn't start yesterday. And I want to say that Jesus has been mentioned also from the book of Genesis, the beginning of the creation. We need to understand as we come now at the back to understand the issue of the one we are talking about of his crucifixion has been mentioned in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, Nauko, in Menukuria about the creation and where God was saying, let us make men with our likeness. Amen? 
So in plural, it means us. It was not a person on himself. He is talking with other people. And our also in plural means it was not a single person. It was a combination of a few members who were there present in that meeting. So Christ was there even before the beginning of the creation. So we need to understand that as a background. Now, so that's where our journey starts. And I want to say that uh, later, the prophet also mentioned about Christ. And this prophet uh, Isaiah, chapter 53, has really talked about a person who will come, carry the sins of men and their burdens, and save them. So many people who fought after the creation, and mostly prophets talked about a person that they didn't know who would be because they had not seen him. It is only things that were prophesied. But now here Isaiah is speaking about a person who come to carry the burdens and the sins of men. And because there had been a separation between God and man after the Garden of Eden where Eve and Adam rebelled against the idea and the mind of God, there came a separation between man and God because of sins. And so, because of God's wisdom and God's good plan for mankind, he continued to speak unto his people who are prophets to remind people, though there was that separation, there was still hope for mankind. Though they continued to rebel against God and went against his direction, there was still hope. So God talked to prophets so that they could take this message to his people and let them to understand, though they sinned and they were cast out of the Garden of Eden, God still loved them. And there was still hope for them to come back to the Lord and be united and have fellowship with God. So God continued all those days speaking through the prophets and minding people that there is still hope. The reason for him to come was that all of us had gone astray. That generation which was there had gone astray, had rebelled against what had said the mind, the idea, and the direction of God. And the Bible says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has raised on him the iniquities of all us. Praise the Lord. So, the continuation of people sinning and rebelling against God's direction made God now to bring this statement telling all creation that none was doing or going according to his will or his direction. And all had sinned. Neither the ones that probably looked like they were very close to God. But this verse, verse 1, verse 5, which now is stating that, that what I had quoted, is the one that is telling us all had sinned. Praise the Lord. And because God is righteous, God could not live with his sins around. So he had to find and, and uh, make a way of cleaning or taking away the sins of men from them so that his initial idea of live with the people, having fellowship, and having communion may be restored. So he created this way of raising all sins of men onto one man 
who had not sinned to carry the sins of men so that God could restore his people back to himself. And so, now seeing that everybody had sinned and God is still looking a way to bring his people back, that verse is telling us, even us today, though we have known God, we know he is our creator, even those generations we have come after, now we are talking about us, we have also still continued to live in a way that is not really in the line and with the mind of God. If you look at the generation we have today, you'll be able to understand that the same man who was there from the beginning is the same man who is living. A man who has his own mind, who doesn't want to hear and to abide in God's direction. He wants to do his own things without involving and consulting God in his life or in, in their lives. So, nobody was able to stand before God. So, God looked at the world and the people that he created and like God was much worried about what he did with his own hands. Now, When you look at the scripture that we have read in the New Testament, the tells of the story or those episodes that I have mentioned from Sunday, Palm Sunday, up to today, people planning and people scheming things that will make sure they have achieved their desire and their plan. By yesterday, when the Passover was uh, taking over, this, the, the, the Passover of yesterday, after the disciples and Jesus had taken food together, thereafter, the Roman garment still and the priests and pirates continued to pursue and to get to understand where the authority of this man who is saying he is able to destroy the temple and rebuild it within three days. They couldn't understand the whole episode of what this guy is saying. And now they have taken Jesus to Pilate and they have tried to look for any evidence that could convince the judges that this man, the things he is saying, the things he is doing, are wrong. Buona persifa. And now, it has come to a time whereby Pilate was not able to identify any of the sins that were blamed or accusations that were brought before him against this man, Jesus. So what he did even so that there was these people, this crown that was ganging up. And there were a lot of demonstrations. There was a kind of demonstration that actually was building up because people wanted to make sure that their idea and their desire, what they were desiring to see, has come to be accomplished. So Pilate thought it was good for him maybe to wash his hands out of this issue so that the brain would not go back to him. So he took the issue to St. Hadrian. So when the issue was taken to him, now the governor, he listened to the accusations that were given against Jesus, the man that people were looking like, just like a normal man, because they were used to see this man doing the normal things that the normal people do. He was eating with the people. He was working with the people. He was interacting with the people. He was sleeping even where other people were sleeping. So they thought this is just another normal man. And so what they did, they took now Jesus, 
not realizing, the one that they're accusing, the one that are blaming and bringing heavy accusation against him is the judge of all judges. Amen? And now, they have taken up to Sanhedrin's place, and now the multitude is building their outside. And they are saying, according to our traditions and culture, it is our right that such a time that you release one of our prisoners. Now, the crowd went way high. And they continued to shout and to shout, Governor, you must release one of our prisoners. And now noting that there were other two people who are caught doing the issues that were not in line with the law, and now they were imprisoned. Now Jesus becomes the third person who has been now accused of doing evil things in the society and against the Roman government which was in praise. Now the governor had to make a decision between the three people who were accused of wrong and evil issues, who is more better to be released so that the fulfillment and the desire of these people will be fulfilled. Now, Jesus was still there, listening, being asked questions, and to some point, even he came and he was not even answering any question. Praise the Lord. Because he could be able to read and understand the mind and the direction of the governance which was there and the multitude and the crowd which was there crying for the blood. And now knowing that his time has come for him to lay his life for these people who are following him, who are accusing him, all those evil things against him. Jesus just kept silent and questions were asked. Even the governor sometimes he asked him, don't you hear the questions and the allegations that these people have brought before me? I want to say this. There are many times, even in our lives, people may accuse us. People may bring false accusation against us in life. But there are times we, as people of faith, you become wordless because you know the truth, but then they have facts. Praise the Lord. There is difference between facts and the truth. People who are planning and scheming to do things against other people, no matter what they do, first they first go and fight facts so that they can be able to pin you down. If you look at even our courts, if a judgment is to be done upon someone maybe who has been accused, you see our lawyers going from one place to the other for consultations and looking for facts so that once they are tabled before the judge, a judge you have a direction now to make his conclusion about the case which is before him. But judges can do that and people can do all those things. But there is difference between the facts and the truth. Praise the Lord. The truth of the matter here was, the one who is being accused is not a sinner. But the multitude and the governance of Roman had facts of saying, this guy is doing brave mercy because he was actually proclaiming him himself as God. And those were facts because those days, the only person who had authority or a position to be called a ruler or a king was the only the Roman king. Praise the Lord. Those were facts. 
But the truth is, the one who is now being accused that he is doing breast mercy, he is a king of kings. But they didn't realize this. Hallelujah. So the story went on. And now, the point has come where now the governor must release the person that the multitude is asking for to be released to them so that they can kill and destroy the truth. Amen? They were not destroying the facts. They were destroying the truth. Now, Iripo fika wakati waku marizi ya kesi ya Yesu. Wakati multitude na mandamano ilizidi. Na kukawa na kule watu kupiga makere mingi. Hakaona hii kesi hii taita marizi ya vizuri. Haa watu wanaza toma mambo ingine na walete vujo ingine na walete mawaji hapa na kine sitaki. So what I'll do, I'll release this man to them so that they can do what they want with him. Na basi, governor akachiria yesu, akapatua na kasurubiwa. I want to say that in between wakati alipo wachiriwa, na wakamchukua, wakanza sasa kumitaki na kumifanya yale mambo mengine ambao ya kumpiga, kumjeruhi, tunajua yu hadithi vile kulivyo zunguka. Na wakamzungusha, wakamzungusha, mbaka wakamtoa inje wa mji wa yuseremu. Na sababu ilikuwa siku ambao hawangefanya mambo sababu ya kulingana na tradition culture zao. Lazima ule mtu hange fanyue hale mambo kule ndani kuzikwa, kusurubua, wakampereka inje ya mji wa yuseremu, karibu na ukuta na wakasurubisha mwana wa Mungu Aliposurubishwa kuna maneno ambayo tuliyasoma katika kitabu cha Mark ambao Yesu alisema pale msarabani na kukawa Kristo alipokuwa na pumua ya mwisho ndio alisema haya maneno kabla afe akaita baba akasema eroi eloi samakidani Mungu wangu Mungu wangu kwani umeniwacha ni kwa ajili ya uchungu ambao alikuwa nao na uzito wa moyo wake sababu yale mambo alikuwa ameyapitia kwa ajili ya uovu wa watu anatazama kule nje anaona umati ambao uko kule unaridhia damu yake unasema lazima afe lazima mtu asurubiwe Razima akufe. Hatutaki barabas. Tunataka yesu. Bwana pesifa. And I want to say, umati ambao ulikuwa mahali pale, ulikuwa na kiu kubwa zaidi ya damu ya yesu. Lakini hawaku eroa ambao kiu ambao walikuwa nayo ya damu ya yesu. Ni damu ambao ilikuwa ya kuwaokoa na kuwafanya watakatifu na kuwaregesha katika uhusiano wao na Mungu wakaendelea tu kuitisha wakasema lazima Kristo afe na Kristo lazima akufe i want to say this katika maisha yetu nyakati ambazo tunai sababu tumekuja kusherehekea kazi ambao ilifanywa msarabani na Yesu ni vyema kujiuliza wakati Yesu alipokuwa nasurubiwa na akafa kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu msarabani ni jambo gani ambalo la muhimu twalitakiwa kujishika na liwe sehemu yetu ya maisha ni kusikia tu historia ni kushikilia sheria na mikataba na taratibu za wanadamu ambazo wamejiwekea tuzifuate ili tuhakikishe Yesu tumempeleka pale msarabani kama vile hii serikali ambayo ilikuwa ya watu wa Roma walipofanya shida kubwa ilikuwa kuogopa huyu Yesu asipokufa 
atakuwa mfalme wa watu wa Israeli ama watu wa Jews shida ilikuwa na the Roman government na wale ambao walikuwa wakilishi wa serikali hofu yao ilikuwa kusiwe na mfalme mwingine ni jambo gani ambalo huwa pengine tulifanya katika maisha yetu la kuzuia huyu mfalme asije katawara katika mioyo yetu ama tungetaka tukukaa na ule ufalme ambao tulizaliwa nao na ule ambao ni wa utamaduni wetu huyu Yesu ni mfalme na hakuna mambo ya kujibizana na hakuna mambo ya kukataana na vile maandiko imesema ni yeye tu ambaye aliamuliwa na akateruwa na Mungu ili aweze kuleta wokovu kwa wanadamu so as we celebrate what Jesus did on the cross there are several things that Jesus said when he was on the cross and i want to mention maybe few of them one on the cross Jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they do wakati alipokuwa na asurubiwa na kufanya mambo yote alitazama ule mati akaona hawa watu hawaelewi na sababu ilikuwa akufe kwa ajili ya uovu wao basi akajitwika dire zambi za wale watu ile wasije wakaonekana kama wao ni waovu lakini ye, awe ndiye alitenda ule uovu na sasa ameubeba kwa ajili ya kutoa damu yake akakubali kufa akachukua ule uovu wote ili watu wa Mungu waweze kutakazwa na wafanyike wana wa Mungu The other thing Yesu alisema pale msabani sababu alikuwa amesurubua wakuwa watu watatu kuna mwizi ambaye alijua huu ambaye tumesurubua naye sio mtu wa kawaida na akaona huu jamaa yale maneno ambayo nimeisikia na yale maneno ambayo nimeiona sababu wa watu watu walikuwa na information si mambo ya kawaida aliambia Yesu utakapofika katika ufamo wako unikumbuke so Jesus also said today shall thou be with me in paradise akaambia ule mwizi leo 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 si kesho leo leo utakuwa nami kule paradiso katika ufame wa baba the other thing yesu alisema kuna wamama ambao walikuwa wamemfuata now the most astonishing thing is all through all this process watu ambao hujijaza kama wanaume ilifika kiwango wakamtoroka kuanzia petro ambaye alikuwa mtu wa karibu sana mfuasi wa karibu sana na ambaye alikuwa na jua siri nyingi za Yesu na ufalme ambao alikuwa amefichuliwa lakini ilifika wakati petro akamkana Yesu na hata akasema huu mtu sababu unamuona huu mtu mimi mjui hata sijawahi muona mahali pahali popote na ni mwanaume na ndio huyo petro akakana Yesu na akatoroka all through that process watu ambao hawakukata tamaa people who never gave up they followed Jesus to the end and to the moment he was crucified and they never even want to want to go home are women praise the lord and sometimes i think that's why you see even us in churches women mostly are very much in clean the things of the clothes amen nafikiri wanaume zakai wakati mwingine tunaenda tunafika mahali tunachoka lakini wamama hawachoki ukitazama hata makanisa mingi wale watu wengi huwa mahali pale na kufuatilia na kuwa na huruma ni wamama so Jesus said this woman behold the son behold thy mother the, the other thing Jesus said i'm dust sababu alikuwa ametoka damu na maji ambayo ilikuwa kwa mwili wake na mwili wake ukaza kama unakauka 
Sasa alikuwa anatafuta kitu ambacho kingemaliza Q. Wale askari ambao walikuwa pale chini kwa msaraba wakatafuta sponge na wakatafuta debay. Wakaiweka ndani na kamute ambao kalikuwa karefu wakapandisha pale juu mpaka mahali Yesu alipokuwa na wakamnywesha. Na Yesu ndiye alisema I'm dust. Niko na Q. Ya sita, Yesu alisema it is finished. Imekwisha. Haleluya. Na Yesu alisema imekwisha sababu yale mambo ambayo ilikuwa inafuata wanadamu aliweza kuipigania na akaimaliza this is a point whereby Yesu aliposema imekwisha na alipotoa pumzi yake ya mwisho na kazima aliingia kusimu na alipoingia kusimu ufamo wa kule kusimu the satan and the demons in the corridors of hell were very happy and jubilant and saying we have won the battle we have won the battle to meshinda that was the that was actually what was happening and that was the voice from the hell because they thought killing jesus that was his end now look at a world whereby it is so dark that yesu alipo igia kule kusimu ulimwengu wote ulikuwa umenyamaza watu wamekimbia wameenda nyumbani wameenda kufanya shughuli zao wameacha mwana wa Mungu pale msarabani ukawa na hofu the whole world the world was so desperate the world had no hope the world had no direction and now hell is saying it has won the battle So Jesus when he was there he spoke to many so so many who had died there before who had not known the true God and the way of salvation and Jesus preached to them and many came to the kingdom thereafter Jesus took the keys to the kingdom but I'm saying this when hell was saying they have won the battle this was an indicator of telling the demons and the father of demons they have lost the battle amen supies my coffee because the grave hell could not hold jesus forever the word that christ had said remember Nilikuwa nimesema siku ya tatu nitafufuka. So you see the deception of the evil one and the demons telling the people that this man will never wake up again. We have destroyed his kingdom and his direction and his mind towards God's people. But God in heaven the Father had not forsaken his son. God was still with Jesus and because of the prophecy that was given earlier that after three days Jesus will rise again from the from the grave it had to come to pass now these people who were preached to and they gave their eyes to Jesus are the people from the early times of creation of the world after Adam sinning people continued to sin but they didn't have a way of reconciling themselves with the god and now god has done his real work and finalized it now through this time we are saying of crucifixion of jesus to make sure what he intended for his people it has come to pass so that his people will never say will never suffer the eternal shame because god 
Jesus has taken the shame of men. He has carried it for us. So that we'll be able to walk broadly upright and saying we have a savior who has saved our lives so we shall not go to hell but we have an eternity home in heaven our father lives in Jesus name. So we are glad today to celebrate what the Lord has done for us. And as we celebrate this work of Christ it is good to remind ourselves that the evil one is not asleep even up today. He's still campaigning and trying to convince this world that we don't belong to heaven. We belong to hell. Those are pure eyes. The truth is that Jesus died and he has made a way for us to have an access to our Father who is our creator. So that as we call God through the name of Jesus and we repent our sins, we are saved and we have become children of inheritance. Amen? So what a great joy as we celebrate this day, the work that God has done for us to know that though we are living in a condemnation world where we are being condemned of many things, and the world wants to change even the direction of God of taking his people back to himself through other means other than the way God has created the way of Jesus. That's why the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way and I am also the life. Amen? So there is no other way that to make God's people be with the God in eternity other than the way God has created through Jesus Christ. So Christ has become a way for us to reconcile with God, not only here, also in heaven. Amen? So this is a great day. We should rejoice and say that our victory is here with us because Jesus is not on the cross. Jesus died, and Jesus rose again, and Jesus is at the right hand of our Father in heaven, petitioning for us so that none of us who hears this message will not go astray, but will inherit the kingdom of God in totality in Jesus' name. Amen? So we are people that are privileged in a great way so that as we hear this voice of God telling us you people who are heavy burden laden come to me I will carry all your burdens your sicknesses your worries bring all of them to me I'm able because I was able to defeat the evil one he defeated the grave and the death also has no power over all people who have put their faith in Jesus. So we are great people of God. And God, that's how demonstrated his love to us and to the whole world. That whoever will hear this message of crucifixion is revived and his attitude and mind has changed towards God's idea and direction so that as we follow him we are confident we have hope that what was done on the cross is enough for us. Amen? There's no other sacrifice that will be needed. Even though this world is changing day by day people are sacrificing they have gone back to the old ways of sacrificing Buzinangombe. But the people of faith in God, I want to assure you there is no other sacrifice that will make men clean. There is no other sacrifice that will be done to reconcile men now and forever other than what we are celebrating today that was done on close 
by Jesus Christ. So we are great people of God. So as we live, let's live boldly with confidence, telling other people it was paid on the Calvary. We are free. We are redeemed. We are healed. We are liberated. And we belong to a great kingdom other than the what we see here in this world. Here we are passers by. Our kingdom and our heavenly home is more brilliant than what we see around. The houses we see, the roads we see around, the vehicles that we drive around are not comparable to what is installed for us in heaven where Jesus is seated with the Father, petitioning for us that these ones, you give them to me. And none of them, I want neither to get lost. So we are covered. Amen? We have an assurance. The assurance that has been given to us is only of that of blood of Jesus Christ and nothing else. And that blood is enough to cover us. Even the times we are here, neither we are going turmoil of issues, neither we are accused, neither we are rejected. The blood of Jesus Christ is able to cover us till we meet our maker and our deliverer, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So it's a wonderful time when we reflect and see what the Lord has done for us. We have a reason to rejoice, and we have a reason to live with the peace because Jesus said and told his disciples, what I leave with you is my peace. He would have left many things with us because everything that we see in this world belongs to him. But he told those who are people that are very close to him, what I give you is my peace. Because he knew we have tribulations like the one that Jesus went through. Well, but because we have the peace of God, we'll be able to understand the things of this world and continue to fight to the end because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the Calvary in Jesus' name. So as we go home and share times with our loved ones, our family members, our neighbors, let's remember to remind one of us, each and every one of us, that the work is complete. There is nothing else that we need to do. The only thing that is left for us is to speak of his goodness and his mercies to all generations so that they may also come and test and see that God is good. Amen? If there's nowhere else they have an assurance other than the work which was done on the cross. The other day I was going through social media and I saw in Israel currently the government which is in place is trying to bring a law whereby when you speak of the redemption and the matters to do with Christ, the jam, uh, the, 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 what I'm saying, the, 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 the term for jail term for that accusation, you are supposed to go to jail for one year and probably you need to bail out. Amen? So we are living in a time where the world wants to silence the voice of God and imagine also those things now are crafted where the good news came from. And the government of Israel, within the readers, there are a few people who want to manipulate and uh, bring a law which actually will condemn the preaching and the matters of Jesus Christ in the world. So we need to understand the one who died for us cannot be silent neither by any government, neither by any authority, because he is supreme God who has the authority and God says that he has given him power here and also in heaven. Amen? 
So even though the world wants to silence the voice of God, as we have hope, and as we are focused, and we know, and we trust, the one who called us is faithful to carry us to the end of the ages. But what we need to understand also and remember, Jesus also said, I've gone to the Father, but i come back for you. The time is so close for the rapture of Jesus Christ. That's why you see globally every nation is crafting funny issues to confuse the world that Messiah is not coming. Messiah died and rose again and he is coming again to take his own church back home. So we need to pray. We need to live with the joy, with the vigor, telling other people, though the world is saying this, Jesus said, I'll come back for you very soon and very soon. Praise the Lord. So we not live in fear. We live in boldness, confidence, because Jesus is coming for us soon and very soon. Shall we stand? As we bow before the presence of God this morning, I'll pray that we reflect on the lives that we live today. And I've said that the world is crafting to change the direction, the mind of God in people's life. Are we well standing firm in faith? Are we well standing and waiting eagerly for the one who died for us that once he comes back, he will find us set to go home with him. It is a time of reflection and we see nothing we can be able to do without him. The work he did on the cross is enough for us. The ways that mankind is looking to get to heaven are not equal to what was done on the cross and they'll never be equal now and forever. Examine your heart and see have you aligned yourself? Have you accepted this king who was rejected by the Roman government and the multitude that was there outside crying and craving for his blood? Have you given him an opportunity in your heart to be a king and a reader? A king who is a savior. Today is a good day that we give back our hearts to Jesus. That the Lord may lead and guide us in this life we are living. We are living in times whereby there is a lot of confusion in the world. But the goodness is Christ has given us the sober mind to understand the things of the Spirit. Are you here? You want to reconcile yourself with God. Time is now. Tell God, I've been very much worried about the things that are happening in my family, things that are happening in our lives. I'm also very much worried about what's happening in our nation and other nations. But I want you to build confidence in God. Though things are, seems like they are not going the way we would like them to go. But we have hope in God that God will deliver us from all these worries and troubles because he carried all our troubles and our fears. Are you there? Are you worried about your children? They have been now gotten into addiction of all those kind of drugs which are in the market. They have also gone to the matters of LGBTQ and you don't know how to bring them out of those organizations. But Christ is able to deliver them, purify them, perfect them so that before they get to heaven, they have a testimony to say, we have met Jesus, the one people rejected. 
and has transformed our lives to be the children of God. Are you there? In your family, there's a lot of divisions. There's a lot of hatred. People doesn't want you. They don't want to hear what you are saying. They don't even want to associate with you because we are associated with this kingdom. I'm assuring today, don't get worried. Don't fear. Stand firm in faith in God and God will deliver you. You see the deliverance of our God for his faithful. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are before you are present this morning, O oh God, to celebrate you, you, our victor, O oh God. We are grateful before you because you love and you demonstrated your love to us through your son Jesus, laying his life on the cross for us. That in our lives, O oh God, we never be ashamed. We not feel low esteemed in our lives. For you are our power, O oh God. We thank you because of the work that you did on the cross for all of us. That when the sicknesses and diseases come to us, O oh God, in your name, they are defeated. When Satan wants to whisper to us that you die, we have this testimony that Jesus died on the cross and the work of healing was paid for us on the cross. We are grateful, O oh God. You took all in our families, O oh God, that we may be well in our bodies, in our souls, in our spirits, O oh God. We thank you and we bless you. Father, this morning, we want to commit the church of Jesus Christ into our hands, O oh God, and we pray for it that, Lord, you continue to manifest your power you are understanding upon believers, oh God, such time that you are living. You are too close to your coming for the church, oh God. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God, you hearken our hearts and our minds to understand this. And Father, we try to align ourselves with your word and with your mind and your heart, oh God. So that as you come back, Lord, for us, you find people who have been waiting eagerly for you. We pray for the people who minister in the church, that God of heaven, that you give them a rema word and a, and a word that has impact on people's life so that people's life may be changed, O oh God. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the hearkening of our hearts, Lord, will be there because we cannot resist your power, O oh King of our glory. We thank you even for our church, Dome, and pray for our members, O oh God, wherever they are, O oh God. Them who have traveled, O oh God, to the up country, and them that are around, O oh King of Glory, may you have mercy on them. As we celebrate the work that which was undone on the cross by Jesus Christ, may you unite us, O oh God, perfect us, all of us, in your will, so that we, as we continue to serve you in this place, O oh God, your mind, your ideas, O oh God, we go before us, O oh God. And you shall say yes to what you tell us. We shall say yes to your direction, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. And Father, we'll be grateful as we see all things are working for good for us, O oh God. And for your own glory in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you and worship you. As we go home, O oh Lord, we pray that you may dismiss us, O oh God, with thy blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and believe. Amen. God bless you.